exiled Indian community has suffered in silence on the lowest rung of Malaysian society. But with this demonstration last year, they sent a clear message that they would no longer put up with it. The protest has persisted, even under attack from water cannons, said a lot about their determination. Only when the police added stinging chemicals to the water were they able to stop the demonstration. But by then, the central business district had been locked down for over six hours, and the protests organizers, the Hindu Rights Action Force, or Hindra, had made their point. That the Indian community was sick of being officially treated as second-class citizens in their own country. Many of the government forms and all that, we don't see the word Indian. They said uh, other races. We have, they put us in other races, which means the recognition is not there. So we want the Indian community who has contributed in a very large way for the development of this country to be recognized. Ramachandra Mayapa is one of the founders of Hindra and now its spiritual advisor. We feel that it is our duty towards our motherhood, our mother language, our mother culture, our mother religion. So if anybody calls it by any name, let them call us terrorists, let us call criminals or whatever it is, they are even saying that we are not patriotic to the nation, let them call us by any names, but we are performing our duty. Ramachandran is lucky to be free. Hundreds were arrested, and a few days later, five Hindra leaders were locked up under the draconian Internal Security Act, and they're still in jail. But the arrests came too late to silence the movement. Hindra had already become a household name. Eighty-two-year-old Sadhasivam sold his tapping knife a long time ago, but he still remembers how to draw rubber. Did you have a good life as a rubber tapper? Oh, no, 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 no. When Malaysia was a British colony, plantation owners brought in Tamils from India's south as indentured labourers to do the rubber tapping. Indians have been losing their homes for decades now as Malaysia develops and the old plantation converted into residential estates, mostly for ethnic Malays. The families who've lived here in workers' quarters for three generations are now being forced by the government into these new rental flats. <laughs> But while some have gone, a determined few are refusing to leave. 73-year-old Nyanama understands the need for development, but says she won't be going anywhere without a fair deal. Nyanama's neighbor is also bitter about having to leave. Like most Malaysian Indians, these people have a strong sense of their community's disadvantage. Now, even the cemetery where their ancestors rest is earmarked to be moved. But that's something these families will not accept. We don't want to move that. The one is our property. 
So our grandfather all inside there. So we don't want anybody disturbed. Nyanama's daughter, Shanti, is a housewife who had never been interested in politics. But like everyone else, she's been swept along with the Hindruff movement. She even surprised herself by going to their demonstration November 25th last year and by joining a hunger strike in support of the Hindraf Five. நல்லா <laughs> The Hindra uprising has brought simmering discontent to the surface. In approaching the election, Shanti believes it has the majority Malay ruling party worried. Soon, I'll have the Mari. A pretty Mari can Sanaka, Angulwani and Gamel or Bayark. So, you will allow one Nasir Rang air. A pretty solely in the election, Lakuri Angul Bayark and on the Mati Walatio. A pretty. Another source of resentment for Malaysia's Indians is that while mosques seem to be springing up everywhere, Hindu temples are being destroyed. The destruction of this temple last November came during the build-up to the Hindraf demonstration and just days before the Hindu holy festival of Deep Valley that the authorities wouldn't wait until after the ceremonies is unforgivable to Ramachandra. They just asked for two days for the temple to be relocated and all these things, but they, he refused and within two hours he came, they came, the enforcement there came to break the temple. That's when within the two hours, the, the people's power came into action. They came there to protect the whole temple. So we find that that is a very significant thing and that uh, news when throughout the country, throughout the world, and that created a momentum. These boys won't forget the early morning visit by the authorities, which saw the temple destroyed. Activists from Hindra joined the locals and tried to stop them. So where do you go to, to pray now? His family managed to save some of the statues and his mother has set them up as a makeshift temple in their home. Despite their requests, they have not been given a suitable alternative site for their temple. So in an act of defiance, they're going ahead and building one anyway. It's wedged between two houses, just meters from the site of the old one. Today, the first brick is blessed and their new temple is up and running.
Much of the Indian community's anger is directed at Public Works Minister Sami Velu. He's also president of the Malaysian Indian Congress Party, which has been in a long, cosy coalition with UMNO, the dominant I have, as minister, in the last 29 years, built more than 1,500 temples. I have gone all out and fought the government in the cabinet to say that the camp temple must be retained. These people go on building small, small, unwanted temples on land, that is, private land, somebody's land, on government land, by the side of the drain, by the side of the road. I don't think that is that's a real respect for Hinduism. When the Indian community's frustration started boiling over last November, thousands gathered here at the Batu Caves Temple compound to get some rest the night before Hindra's big demonstration. They had no inkling of what was to come. Early in the morning, before dawn, the police attacked, firing a water cannon and tear gas into the temple grounds. In the chaos that followed, there were injuries on both sides. 31 people were charged with attempted murder of a policeman. So this and the very fact that police had desecrated a place of worship left Indians across Malaysia furious with the government. We cannot forgive this government. We cannot forgive anybody who over involved this action. This is going to be black mark in the heart for the generation. Nobody going to forgive these people for their actions. With the Malaysian government refusing to hear them out, Hindra tried to deliver a petition to the British Embassy. They claim Indians were abandoned by the British Empire after independence and they've taken out a trillion dollar lawsuit against the British government. The man the Malaysian government considers the sole Indian political voice has little sympathy for their tactics. They encourage bad practices of youths going around fighting, shouting, and doing everything. They have completely spoiled this peaceful community. This is what they have gained, nothing else. But they are diminishing slowly. Traditionally, Indians have voted in a block for the Malaysian Indian Congress, which has allowed Sami Bellu to keep his seat for 29 years. The national election rapidly approaching has appeared to everyone but him these loyalties may be shifting. But it does seem that this time you are in a difficult position. No? I'm not at all. <laughs> but I'm very comfortable. Aren't you caught uh, between a rock and a hard place? You've got the certain elements, quite, quite strong opposition amongst the Indian community. No, not at all. campaign underway, Hindra activists have called a prayer session and speeches at this temple for the five leaders being held under the Internal Security Act. The police have just issued a warning not to give speeches in the temple. How come I can speak here? How are the people going to listen? I have to use a microphone, okay? So this is what happening in Malaysia now. Ha, this is a truly Malaysia. The temple manager is in a tight bind, under pressure from his community and from the authority. No, I don't. No? Thank you very much. No? Australian because uh, I understand yeah. Yeah, we have a problem in our small What's the problem? temple. We have a problem. We cannot go against the government. Okay. So, the the brother of one of the five Hindra leaders held in prison is and he's not happy about being forced into the temple car park. 
கூட்டமா வந்துடுறானுங்க ஏன் ஏன் இந்த அவள் நம்மளுக்கு பாத்துங்க நீங்க உங்களுக்கும் வேணும் எனக்கும் வேணும் Anwar Ibrahim has a speech for every occasion, and here at a market, he tailors the message accordingly, blaming the ruling party for the cost of living. Dan sekarang ni ikan bawang semua mahal sebab barisan nasional perintah. Kita naik 8 bulan pilihan raya, 9 bulan kita menang insya Allah harga minyak turun, harga bayang turun. His popularity infuriates the government, who denounce him as a political opportunist whose latest stunt is championing the rights of Indians. I know him very well. I worked with him earlier. I know what a tricky man he is. These people are drawn into this sort of a thing. You wait and see. Anwar Ibrahim said that he sympathizes with the Indians. But he doesn't give seat to the Indians to fight. But at least one Indian candidate has been given a chance to sit. And Manika Vassa is justifiably happy to have this boost to his campaign. It may just be enough to convince ethnic Malays to vote for him as well as Indians. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. When he was Deputy Prime Minister, when he was Minister for Finance, did he ever come out to say, do anything for the Indians? No. He was traditionally a one-race man. He had the Finance Ministry in his hand. If he wanted to, he could have done a lot of things to us. He didn't. But today, he's... I, I don't want to say a lot of things to say. Despite critics' doubts about his sincerity, Anwar Ibrahim is determined to connect with the Indian world. We have to respond positively and responsibly to the legitimate grievances, education, poverty, unemployment. This government is totally uh, in a state of a denial, arrogant, and they're not, uh, we're not even prepared to listen to their grievances. And I think we have make, to make amends. We cannot treat minorities in this way in any country. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Okay.
On the 8th of March, Malaysians went to the polls, with the fate of the Indian movement hanging in the balance. As Hindra's spiritual leader went in to vote, it was still unclear whether they could muster a significant swing against the government. We want to prove that the Indians have now united for one cause and they have uh, come out to stand for that cause. And we want them to recognize us through this voting process. When the results came out, the power of the Indian vote was confirmed. The coalition that has ruled Malaysia since independence had its worst result ever. The major urban industrial states all fell to the opposition. And although Prime Minister Badawi was putting on a brave face, there were calls for him to stand down. Because of the tension, the police chief banned all victory celebrations. For the main players in Malaysian politics, the election result was like an earthquake. In the Tamil papers here, there's been reports that you've had eggs thrown at you during this campaign? No, no, no. no. Nobody dared to throw eggs on me. Sami Velu, the most senior Indian face in government for three decades, lost his seat on his 72nd birthday. His Malaysian Indian Congress party was decimated, holding on to only three seats. The Chinese community are supporting me. If I have 50% from the Malay or 40%, I will win this Kappa seat. Yeah! Yeah! Mani Kavasin did get Malay support. He won the seat and now sits in Parliament. And incredibly, thanks to his wife's tireless campaign, the jailed M. Manuharan also won his seat. Malaysian authorities are still trying to work out how he can represent his constituency in a prison cell. In all, a record 10 Indian opposition MPs were voted into power. And the man credited with pulling together the diverse opposition movement saw 31 of his Kadilan party candidates win seats, including both his wife and daughter. One of them is expected to make way for him shortly after his 10 year ban from politics expired last week. The balance of power in Malaysia may well have changed forever. Okay,